one of the things I hope I can do is encourage people who are on their own personal health journey. Um, and I hope that I can do that by lifting the burden of anxiety and guilt about consuming animal source foods. Obviously, people within your community can speak to the reality about their health effects. In other words, we've been told for decades that you know eating red meat's bad for you. Eating animal uh, source fats are bad for you. Eating cholesterol is bad for you. We understand now that none of those are well-founded. And it seems to me like the very same people that sold us on those myths are selling us on myths about the impact of animal agriculture on food supply, as well as the environment in, in many different factors. And so I just want people to don't listen to them. Just go on, focus on improving your health, passing that message along, and I'm happy to introduce people who are doing work to provide evidence that these narratives are in fact wrong. Because it, it, it seems like they've got this really strong message, like the rope is really thick and strong. But if we can tease it apart and test all the individual strands, we find that those strands fail. And let's not ignore the fact that they've been telling us the wrong thing about our health and animal source foods as part of that rope. And as, as that gets weaker and weaker, they're going to talk less and less about that, but it's there and we need to say, but you know, it's all part of your package and we won't accept delivery on your package. So key point, we need to get more uh, aware of the importance of our own health. Um, our health as members of a family, members of a community, as workers, um, because there's an impact when we are inhibited by the various chronic illnesses that are now so common. Um, I also have given presentations where I start to talk about what's the environmental footprint of chronic disease, and it turns out to be significant. So much so that one estimate said that if the average adult American with type 2 diabetes could eliminate their medication use, just speculating wildly that drug-free remission from type 2 diabetes might actually be a thing, that if that person could eliminate their medication use, they would actually lower their carbon footprint 29% more than if they shifted from a high meat to a vegan diet. So we, we need to understand that when you improve your health, you are improving the world. And for many people, that may be the most practical thing they can do to make the world a better place. Um, I've mentioned before, you cannot be an advocate for sustainably produced food without being an advocate for animal sourced foods. There's a lot of topics within that, but that's just an objective observation. And this is one of the best ways to explain that, that you cannot replace food production with food processors. So when they're taking arguably human edible foodstuffs and processing them to make some fake meat or other product, they're not increasing the food supply at all. They're, again, taking what arguably is human edible and they're processing it into something else. I don't know of any process that is 100% efficient. So less is going to come out than goes in. And we also know that when plant source foods are processed, they tend to get less um nutritiously valuable. Um, that's a clumsy way to say that. Uh, for example, when cereal grains, which are inherently low in the essential amino acid lysine, are processed, that lysine actually becomes less, even less available. And so things like that, um, we, we need to be maybe better informed about some of these topics, but the more we look at it, the more we realize that the inclusion of animal source foods is the ideal way to ensure that we're getting the essential nutrition that every human being needs for proper function and development. 